chalk. Some hate it, others couldn't care less about it, but most arm wrestlers can't live without it. For being one of the more essential aspects of our sport, not much really gets said about chalk. And to be fair, there really isn't all that much to it. It's used in arm wrestling, as in many other sports, for the purpose of getting a better grip, specifically in arm wrestling, on your opponent's hand. However, chalk still does play a very fundamental role in our sport. And over the years of training and going to practices, I've noticed that chalk is almost something taken for granted when introducing new people to arm wrestling. We often teach newer guys about the table, the strap, maybe even the riser platform, but almost never do we talk to them about the chalk. It's something that's just there and we assume that everyone knows what to do with it. And there is some validity to that. Generally speaking, it's quite intuitive as to what the chalk is for and what to do with it. Especially so if you're someone who naturally gets sweaty quite easily. But as simple as it may seem, I think that just as how powerlifters may chalk their traps during a squat, or how rock climbers may chalk their holds sometimes, there is a nuance to how chalk is used that is specific to arm wrestling. To approach this topic, I want to first show you guys how the majority of people usually chalk up their hands before an arm wrestling match. You can see that the majority of the palm and the fingers are covered in chalk, with the back of the hand being left relatively unchalked. And as a general approach, this is completely fine. The majority of the main contact points between you and your opponent are covered, and leaving the back of your hand unchalked will make it harder for your opponent to grip on if they don't chalk up themselves. Most people are generally fine with doing just this, but we can still do better. Next up is chalking the elbow pad. Now this is where it gets interesting because of how chalk works. The first reason, of course, is to remove the oils and moisture that accumulate on the pad so that our elbows get a little bit more friction and don't slide off as easily during the match. Oftentimes during a match, as sweat accumulates and drips down our arms onto the pad, it can make the surface very slippery and cause us to easily slide off the pad accidentally, resulting in a foul or worse, losing the match. That's why it is important to re-chalk the pad between every ready go to minimize the chances of this happening. The second reason is pretty much the complete opposite and is used for a different situation. Sometimes some elbow pads have a tackiness or stickiness to them which makes it difficult for us to slide and maneuver our elbows across the pad. This is very detrimental for arm wrestlers because we will then not be able to fully utilize the space afforded to us by the elbow pad which can put us in a very disadvantaged position. For example, a top roller who can't drag their elbow back to fully engage their back pressure, or hooker who can't shoot forward to secure their cup, can immediately lose their advantage and possibly lose the match. Sometimes, because of the tackiness of the material, it even causes us to inadvertently do elbow hops just to adjust our elbow positions, which will result in unintentional fouls being called. Counterintuitively, Chalk can help to alleviate this by creating a smoother surface for our elbows to slide over for these types of pads. So no matter the situation, chalking the pad is still beneficial. And of course it goes without saying, chalking your elbow itself is pretty self-explanatory based on what I've just mentioned. While what we've described so far is pretty much applicable and beneficial to all arm wrestlers, there are some chalking techniques that are specific depending on the style you arm wrestle with. The first one I want to introduce is chalking the side of your pinky. This is especially important for hook pullers, and here's why. As a hooker, when you come forward and secure a deep cup, instead of the contact point being just on your palm and fingers, there's going to be a huge amount of surface area on the side of your pinky that's in contact with the opponent as you're chopping down on them. If this contact point, along with your palm and fingers, gets too slippery, it makes it easier for your hand to slide down your opponent's hand and arm into almost a sort of dad move-like position, 
which we all don't want to happen during a match. Next up is chalking your wrist and forearm. This is specifically for when the match goes into the strap. Sometimes during a strap match, you'll find that either because the strap wasn't applied exactly the way you like it, or because the force is exerted during the match, the strap starts to slide up your arm. And as we all know, you want the strap as low as possible at all times during the match. So, by chalking your wrist and forearm, it'll give that strap just that tiny bit more bite on your arm and lower the chances of it moving too far up your arm during the arm wrestling match. Lastly, which is probably the least known tip out of everything I've mentioned so far, is chalking the back of your thumb specifically your thumbnail. This one is for those of us who arm wrestle with our thumbs capped. No matter whether you're a top roller or a hooker, I'm sure a lot of us have experienced this before. We set up with our thumbs capped, but as soon as the match starts and we hit, we realize that our fingers have slid down and lost some height. Now, this couple of millimeters of lost height can be the difference between winning and losing, so it is important for us to make sure that this is taken care of. Having your thumbnail chalked means that your index finger will have a better grip while capped and thus be better able to maintain height instead of just sliding down and defeating the purpose of capping in the first place. Similarly, for those of us who don't cap our thumbs, chalking our thumb pad and the back of our index finger is important for the very same reason of helping to prevent our finger from sliding down lower and causing us to lose our high grip. So those are the chalking tips that I found to be most helpful for myself when it comes to arm wrestling. Some of them I figured out myself over time, but others were taught to me much later on during my arm wrestling career. And the main point of me making this video is that I realized that most of these things were not taught to me early on in my arm wrestling career. And I do strongly believe that they are helpful enough at times to make a significant difference for certain matches. So I just wanted to share these tips with you guys. And of course, I want to hear back from you if you have your own tips about chalking as well. Of course, I don't think I know every single thing or trick about the sport when it comes to chalk. And also, I did not specifically talk about chalking your opponent or removing chalk from your opponent because I just don't think it's that sportsmanlike. And either way, they can still just undo what you've just done, so it's pretty much just a waste of time. But yeah, looking forward to hearing you guys' thoughts about this. I'm Greg, and I'll see you in the next one.